12 months, I did not have a chance to fulfill my pledges. And I'm going to discuss what happens in that case. If you're just joining, I'm going to repeat. I did not fulfill all the pledges that I pledged. And tonight, we're going to discuss all the Q&As, all the things. What happens if you pledged and you couldn't fulfill that pledge? What happens if you pledge and you made a lot of money? What do you do the next year? What do you do if you still owe from last year? What do you do if this is your first time? What do you do if you're struggling to make ends meet? We're going to go through all that right now, right here. So welcome, everybody. So happy. Um, I'm going to start taking your questions. Welcome, Instagram. Um, I'm going to start with Instagram, then we're going to go to LinkedIn, then we're going to go to YouTube. So Instagram, we have first, we have Instagram, put on your, put your questions, please. We're going to answer them. Okay. We're going to go to, um, let me give you the first, let me give you the first concept before we go into questions. All right. The whole concept is like this. What's up, Beryl, uh, Mayor Weiss. How are you? What's up, Stephen Harstein? How are you? I love you too. Hi, Minerva. Graham, how are you? Uh, Francois Pam, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. Brendan Saloum, thank you for being here. Um, so let me give you the general concept, how it stands, okay? There's this thing in this world. You might have heard of him. His name is God, okay? And God runs the world. And God wants to see that you are a good banker for him. And he has people that he could do business with, okay? So the general concept is like this. You have person number one, okay? He doesn't give any tzedakah. He doesn't give any charity, all right? He keeps everything for himself. He doesn't give to anybody. He's a miser, and he doesn't give to anybody. He keeps all the money for himself. And this person is usually always angry, they're always complaining. Why don't I have enough money? Why don't I have enough everything? Why am I always struggling? And that person can't figure out why he's struggling financially. Then you have person number two. Person number two gives charity. I'm going to make a little halo on top of his head. Okay. Person number one, person number two. And God sees person number one never gives anything. Person number two gives charity. At the end of the day, God says to himself, I need a banker. I need to choose who I'm going to bank with. I need to put my money with somebody. Who am I going to put my money with? Should I put it with person number one, who never gives anything to charity? Or should I put that money with person number two that actually gives charity on a regular basis? If you were God... Who would you choose to give that money to? I would give it to person number two. All right. God wants us to give charity. That's why he made poor people in this world. He wants us to give charity. All right. I'm going to take your questions. Uh, we're going to go to YouTube. We have here tech. We have here uh, Rosetta Ruth Raceman. I pledged again this year. Does paying towards the pledge happen before or after Rosh Hashanah? So, um, you're asking a great, a great question. So we're first going to understand what is a pledge? What does that mean? Okay, I've been talking about a pledge here for years. Um, this is new. I'm still figuring it out. Bear with me. There we go. What a pledge. What's a pledge? Okay, so we're going to discuss what is that exactly? Pledge. Okay, so we live in a generation this concept came about in America. The concept of a pledge means that you're giving charity. You're giving charity before it comes to you, right? You might say to yourself, like many people, is I'm broke. And by the way, with inflation, with all these things, it's very, very hard right now, all right? A lot of people are struggling. You might say to yourself, I'm broke. How could I give charity? I don't have any money. And that's where the concept of a pledge comes into place. So you choose your favorite organization. Let's say it's your local community center, okay? Your local community center. Get out of here. Community center. Let's say it's your local, um, uh, let's say, synagogue. Synagogue, whatever it is, okay? Let's say it's your local food bank, orphanage. I mean, you name it. 
There's no shortage of people that are looking for money. I can guarantee you that, okay? And you call them on the phone and you say to them something like this. Hey, Tony. Hey, Baruch. Hey, Suzanne. I would like to make a pledge for you. I would like to make a pledge to you. And they say, wow, that's so nice. What would you like to pledge? And you say to them something like, I would like to pledge for you, right? Really, to understand the whole concept of giving charity, it all starts from the Bible. It all starts from the Torah. The Torah says that a person has to tithe. A person has to give 10% of their earnings. The problem is, is that most people are not, work, are not left with anything at the end of the day. Everybody's broke. So how are you supposed to give money 10% left? Let's say a person makes $100,000 a year. I went through this in my movie and God we test. If a person makes $100,000 a year after taxes, after rent, after tuition, after insurance, after life insurance, after food, after all these things, the person's in debt. How is the person supposed to make any money? Um, exactly like on, on Instagram, Coach Teshmari says, broke. Okay? Um, 100%. The person's broke. Richard Silver on LinkedIn, Shalom Barrel. Robin Shapiro, I tithe 10% give to charity on YouTube. Thank you, by the way. I'm seeing all of your comments, everything I see. Um, this, this is not like a blind, uh, I'm not preaching here. I see you guys. I feel you guys. Um, Baruch Hashem, I see your comment there. Um, how, how can I improve this? Beryl, my biggest concern is that the pledge could be considered a vow. What are your thoughts? Guys, I'm going to get to all your questions, okay? I'm just here with you. I'm not... Um, bamboo comfort pillows, yes, it's backwards. Exactly the concept, okay? Amr, salam alaikum, alaikum salam. Okay, so again, back to the pledge. You're, you're calling up your local imam, you're calling up your local whoever it is, your community center, your synagogue, your food bank, whatever have you, your kids' school, okay? Your local, you know, your local soccer team, um, your local orphanage, whatever that might be, and you're calling them on the phone, you're saying, hey, I would like to make a pledge to you. And they're going to say, wow, that's so nice. And then you're going to say to yourself, what should I pledge? So here's my humble suggestion. The Bible suggests that we give 10%. So that means that if you're making $100,000, you know, after taxes, you're left with, let's say, $70,000. Okay. Let's just call it $10,000 just to make it easy. $10,000 to charity. And then you might say, which you're right, how can I give $10,000? I don't have that type of money. And the answer is, the Torah tells us, the Bible tells us something beautiful. It tells us that if you give charity, if you give charity, God will make you rich. It, makes, it doesn't make sense. You might be saying to yourself, how does that make sense? And my answer to you is, it does not make sense. This is something that does not make sense. It's something that goes above logic. It's something that is not, this is a godly concept. This is, a, this is something that is above logic, above understanding. So you're supposed to, you give the charity and God tells you, if you give charity, I'll make you rich. And then you might say, I don't believe you, God. And then God says, oh yeah, test me. Test me, okay? He says, test me. Test me that if I don't give you in, 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 in Torah, in Bible, it says Malachi on chapter 3, verse 10. Test me with giving charity. And that God says, if I don't open up for you the heavens and rain down blessings on you, I'm going to do that for you. So God says, you don't believe me? Great. Don't believe me. Don't trust me. He doesn't say, trust me in this. He says, test me in this. Okay? Guys, I'm going to get to all your questions. I, I don't want to promise, but I'm going to get to all your questions. I see you, Arcadia Rabbi, in the comments of Instagram. Thank you for answering people's questions. Sue, um, thank you also for helping out. I appreciate you on Instagram. Morty Studios, welcome. Um, Mayor Weiss, can you be rich on a W-2? Absolutely. Um, Stephen Sherman, I believe you. Thank you. I believe you too. Um, Joseph Lapko, how you doing? Asher, Asher Bishril Asher, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Sherry Hamilton, I want to give charity, but I'm already trying to make ends meet. And after paying my bills, I don't have enough money. Great. Guys, Sherry Hamilton on, on YouTube, perfect example. Sherry says, 
I want to give more charity. I'm only doing it. Sorry, I want to give more charity, but I'm I'm making I'm having trouble making ends meet. And after paying my bills, I don't have enough money left. Exactly like we said, right? So God says, test me with this. So back to our concept of back to our concept of the pledge. Okay, this is where the magic of the pledge comes into place. So you call up your local organization and you pledge to them X amount of dollars. Here's my suggestions to you guys out there. Okay, if you, I would suggest doing if you're doing zero dollars right now. You want to do the bare minimum, okay? So let's say you're making fifty thousand dollars a year, okay? After taxes, you guys have to figure out your own taxes. I'm not, an, I'm not a tax attorney, okay? Fifty thousand dollars a year after taxes. You want to give ten percent of that. So you want to, you want to pledge five thousand dollars, okay? So you call your local organization, your local community organization. And you say to the organization head, I this year, starting in the Jewish New Year or starting whatever, starting in your New Year, I suggest doing it the Jewish New Year because it's not just the Jewish New Year. It's the world's New Year. This is when God created the world. I will give to you $5,000 in the next, in the upcoming year. And every month you're going to start paying off your $5,000, whatever that comes out to. Call it 400 bucks a month, okay? And what you will begin to see in your life, and I'm talking specifically to everybody who is struggling to make ends meet, what you will begin to see in your life is God will begin to, to create abundance in your life, okay? Because right now, it is impossible for you to give that $5,000. If a person is making $50,000 a year, you're struggling. So then the question is, great question you're asking yourself and your beautiful mind. How can I make extra money? I work a job. There's somebody that asked over here, what happens if I'm on a W-2? What happens if I'm an, I'm an employee? What happens if I'm stuck in the, um, what happens if I'm stuck? I cannot earn any more money. Here comes our beautiful Torah. And it says that when God sees that you're giving extra charity, God will make for you, God will make, God will make for you what's new channels, new ways, new ways for you to make money. Not your old way. I'm not suggesting the little increments that you're going to get little raises here and there. Maybe you will. You're going to actually get new ways, new channels, new divine ways. God will have no choice because he challenged you. He tested you. Hey, my brother, Jesus, Gregory Solomon, I love you. I love you. Out of everybody else who's on here, I love you. I love you. I love you. You warmed my heart. Thank you, Greg, for being here. God will give you new ways in order to make money. Okay, I'm gonna give you a perfect, I'm gonna give you a personal example for myself. I started today's live stream by telling you that last year, I don't mind telling you what, you know, I'm gonna brag a little bit, okay? Because I have to brag about something. Last year, I pledged over a quarter of a million dollars to charity, and it was really overextending myself. And this is the, the, the previous year I had done it, this year, I had gone up to almost 300000 and I fell short almost $100,000, okay, which was really painful because I've been doing this for like six or seven years, and it was really, really painful to um, – shout out to Kelsey Solomon also. I love you, Kelsey. I love you. All my siblings are here. I'm going to bring on people to talk also in a few minutes, okay? Um, I fell short of about $100,000 to charity, okay? It was really painful. They were really painful. It was really painful for many reasons. One, because I'm the guy that's telling the whole world to give charity, to give charity, to give charity, and you're, become, you're going to become rich, rich, rich. And here myself, I, 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 I wasn't able to complete it myself, which was really painful. Um, so that's number one. Number two is it made me doubt a little bit. Number three is, is maybe I was wrong. So here's the answer is I know where I made mistakes in business this year. 
and God gave me this year a new business. Remember what I was saying is when you make your pledge, you, you're struggling to make ends meet as it is. God has to give you with a new means, the extra fat in order to be able to fulfill your pledge to charity and to give you plenty of left over that the process was pleasurable for you. So this year, what God gave to me, and I'm so, I'm so grateful to him, is he gave me a new business, okay? A new business that we opened up. This is not a shameless plug, a little bit of a shameless plug. A new business that we opened up. We literally fell into it. Every other business, I had to, I had to beg. I had to, I had to borrow. I don't want to say I, I stole, but I stole contracts, okay? I killed for them with my, with my, I clawed with my bare teeth, all right? A new business was handed to me on a silver platter this year, which was recruiting for recruiting, recruiting for salespeople, for salespeople. We have a whole business, a whole division. We're more busy in that division for companies call us. We call on companies. We tell them we have great salespeople that are looking to work in your area. We are selling salespeople like freaking hotcakes, okay? I have more demand than I have of supply on the salespeople. This is God's gift that he gave to me. This is the new way that God gave to me to make my money in order to be able to fulfill my $300,000 pledge. Those are in Canadian dollars. I have to change it to US dollars. My $300,000 pledge that I did last year that I fell short $100,000 on. God saw, God saw, wow, you jumped. I mean, that's my rendition of how God might sound. Wow, okay? Whoa, Big B. I think when I die at 120 years old, God is going to call me Big B, okay? Um, he's a wow, Big B. I can't believe that you went up to $300,000 this year. Although you felt you're going to fall short $100,000 on your pledge this year, don't worry, my sweet boy. I will give you a way to make that, not only make up that extra $100,000 pledge, but to make plenty more in the new year. So God gave me this year a new business, a new product, a new line that literally fell out of heaven. Don't get me wrong. I still get up every day. I still grind it out every day. I don't, I don't take it easy. I don't take it light. I fight every day. But the business is flowing. The business is rocking. Thank you, God. And I see it with my own two eyes that it is going to happen. So you might be asking yourself, why am I telling you all these things? Because you might be asking yourself, how can I give my five Gs this year? Okay? I don't have any money. The answer is... God will give you new ways to make your money. He will give you new businesses. He'll give you a better job. He'll give you a bigger raise. He'll give you a, a bonus. Whatever the heck it is, he will give you that money so that you'll be able to make that pledge. Okay? It's all circular. So I just want to answer one question before I take um, other people's questions. These are, for, these are for the people that have given um, charity and who have not seen the blessing, okay? You might be saying to yourself, <clears throat> you might be a little jaded right now, okay? Um, and say, I've given and I didn't receive, okay? So you're sitting here, sad. I gave and I didn't receive any money. <sighs> and my answer to you is, it's just because it might not not have been not enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, guys, you know, I'm going to be a little bit harsh here. But, you know, you see sometimes people, they say, oh, you could give charity by, there's many ways to give charity, volunteer and give your time and helping an, an old lady across the street. We're talking cold, hard cash here. Okay. Why money specifically? Why, what is the, what is the, what is the magic about money? Why does God want it so much? Because your blood, your sweat, and your tears go into your money. Okay? 
it says one of the punishments that God gave to man when he ate from the tree of knowledge was that he would have to earn his money by the sweat of his brow. We have to sweat for our money. So when a person gives his money, it's as if he's giving from the sweat, from his blood, from his tears, from his soul, he's giving that money to God. And that's why money is so special by God. Okay? So I just want to, before I go into the questions, I'm not worried that I missed my target by $100,000 last year. I believe because I went because I went so big, I went to 300000 last year in my pledge. Because I went so big, God gave me that new recruiting business and now is becoming the mainstay of my company. And now I'm going to be able to fulfill not only the $100,000 from last year, but I repledged another 200000 So I'm going back in the game for just a little bit less than the $300,000. I'm not giving up on that. But because I aim big, God is giving me big. Just like I said to you before, you might be sad. The reason why you haven't seen the blessing is because it might not be enough. All right. You got to put your blood, your sweat and your tears. You got to test God. It has to pinch. It has to hurt a little bit. All right. Let's go into question. Let's go into question mode. All right. Um, Instagram, Eva Miri. Um, I'm tired and planning on a new business. I'm, I'm retired and I'm planning on a new business field. How to pledge not know how much will I make? Okay, so that's a great question. Everything that I'm talking to you guys about is, is written, can be found in holy books, and is all rooted in Torah. It's all rooted in Bible. I just can't source everything for you right here, right now on this live. But just know that everything I'm telling you, if I'm telling it to you, it's because I've read it and studied it myself. So she asked a great question. How do you pledge if you don't know how much you're going to make? That's the whole concept. Eva, Miri, 15. The whole concept is is you want to pledge. The pledge itself is what stimulates God's blessing. So it says that whatever you pledge should be, your pledge should be within the realm of reality. Okay? And it should not be in the realm of, it should not, sorry. And it should not be, so reality, yes. Chaos, no. Whatever you're pledging should not be in the realm of chaos. So, for example, if you're a guy or a girl that's making 50 Gs right now, you should not pledge a million dollars. That would be in the realm of chaos. Whatever you're pledging should be in the realm of reality. So a guy that's making 50 Gs a year, 100 Gs a year, or even a quarter of a million dollars a year, and last year you gave $5,000 to charity, this year... For you to give your 10%, which would be $25,000 in charity if you're making the quarter million, that would be testing God. And that would be in the world of reality while pinching yourself a little bit. I hope that answered your question. Um, financial Academy. No, do not give what you can. Give a little bit more than you can. That's the whole point. You want to test God. All right, let's go over to LinkedIn. Eli Gashait. Beryl, you are a true Kiddush Hashem and giving the Rebbe so much honor. I love you too. Thank you. Um, Suzanne Van Sheikh Saint Laurent. If they do centralized digital controlled oversights, how can one do this without being penalized by crafty mortals? I have no idea what you just said. Um, <laughs> crazy. Crazy people. All right. Uh, <laughs> where are we here? LinkedIn. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Okay. LinkedIn. Let's go to YouTube. YouTube. Guys on LinkedIn, please ask questions. Okay. Minerva Graham on YouTube asks, I've tithed to my Christian church for over 30 years and never seen the overflow of God's promises. Why? What am I doing wrong? Okay, guys, this is a great question. All right. So this lady is saying, Minerva Graham, um, She's saying that she has given to her Christian church for over 30 years. Maybe you have to give to your local Chabad house. I don't know. Maybe that's the answer. But I think what, what she's saying is she's giving her 10%, okay? And she has not seen the blessing, okay? So my answer to this, my answer to this, guys, is I think about this all the time. Who gives us the right to say that we have the right to wake up 
the next morning and go to work. To go to work and to tithe is a privilege. The very fact that God woke you up in the morning and allowed you to go to work and you gave your 10% and he allows you and me to keep our 90%, that's a good business deal. I'll take that business partnership any day of the week. So for a person to say, I give my 10%, I tithe, and I don't see God's blessing, and yet what you write is that you've been able to give charity for 30 years, that I don't connect with. I think that God has been very sweet to you, and you have to sort of change your mentality. And God will continue to be sweet to you for 30 more or 60 more, 120 more years. I hope that answers your question. Joel Friedman um, from LinkedIn. Instagram, I'm going to start bringing people on Instagram on live, by the way. So don't worry, I'm bringing you guys on. What is the source for pledging in advance? When I learned about Meister in school, it was to take off a tenth from what I earn once it's earned. So Joel Friedman asks a great question. Where, what are, where is this concept of a pledge of a pledge come from? It's a great question. If you look at the Torah, if you look at the Bible, it doesn't talk about pledging in advance. It talks about you give 10% of what you earned. So the Lubavitcher Rebbe gives a talk. Lubavitcher Rebbe, okay? For those of you who don't know who that is, the Lubavitcher Rebbe was one of the most prolific rabbis of the 21st century, has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers all around the world, ignited Judaism after the Second World War, after the Holocaust, and respected one of the greatest respected Jewish leaders of all time. The Lubavitcher Rebbe lived in New York. He moved to New York after living in France and after living in Russia. And he says that in America, where does he get the concept? He actually takes it from American culture. He takes it from American society. America. In America, the concept of a pledge is something that people understand and that people did. And he borrowed the concept of pledging from the Americans, and he actually brought that into Jewish culture, believe it or not. So that's the answer to your question. I hope that, um, I hope that it sits well with you. Um, let's go to Instagram. Let's go. Instagram. Where are we here? Zaid Ibrahim. Hello, Israel. We have oil in Iraq. And Iraq is Jewish land. Okay. Give us your oil. Sounds great. Um, all right. What is the difference? Here we go. True touch cleaning on Instagram. What is the difference between charity, pledge, and first fruit? Okay. So we've, we, we've gone through this a few times. Charity is backwards okay so this month i made let's say i'm just throwing a number out loud ten thousand dollars and i owe ten percent to charity therefore i'm going to give one thousand dollars to charity it's looking backwards as we said before the problem is most people when they make ten thousand dollars they don't have any money left over okay so they don't even have a chance to give their ten percent here when a person a pledge you're pledging forward. You're calling an institution. You're writing a letter, an email, uh, and you're making a pledge to an institution, and you're saying to them, I pledge to you over the next 12 months, whatever it is, $12,000. I'm pledging to you $1,000 a month. And that pledge is what holds a person accountable. And that pledge brings God's blessing into your life. And that pledge makes you rich, ultimately. Okay? Let's keep on going. Um... Oral concepts. Hi, Beryl, on Instagram. I know many people who make millions of dollars a year. Why does Hashem, why does God bless them so much, even though they never give back? Please explain. It says that if a person is rich and doesn't learn Torah and doesn't learn Bible, ultimately he will be poor and not learn Bible. Sometimes God is doing it just to test a person. All right? And that's none of our business. What God does is his business. Our job is to listen to him. God tells us, give charity and I'll make you rich. So that's what we've got to do, baby. Um, a gross field. I'm writing backwards. Oh, no. That's a shame. 
too bad because this stuff was great. All right, let's keep on going. Um, Alon Jera uh, from Instagram. Where could I give charity? I love Israel and thank Hashem for Jewish teaching us the truth about Hashem. Thank you. I suggest donating it to your local God-based institution. Um, orphanages are great. Um, you know, the kids directly need it. It's a, it's a very big mitzvah to give money to orphans or to food banks or to local faith-based institutions. Hope that answers your question. Um, all right, let's go to YouTube for a few questions. Um, okay, let's go. So Tiana Brown on Instagram, on LinkedIn writes, I have recently lost my job. How should I calculate my pledge amount? Again, so Tiana, great question. Um, your pledge amount should be within the realm of reality. It should not be within the realm of chaos. So if you lost your job, do not pledge $20,000. Pledge $100 a month, something that will give God incentive, that will stimulate God to give you a financial blessing. Guys, think about, here's an example, just so you understand. Rain comes from how? It comes from water coming from the ground. When, rain, when, when the heat from the ground and the moisture from the ground goes up to the sky, that is how rain comes back down. When a person pledges money and gives money to charity, what you're doing is you're stimulating, you're sending up that blessing and you're stimulating God's, bless, God's blessing to come back down to you. So that, I hope that answers your question. It should be within the realm of reality, not within the realm of chaos, but still make your move, make your, make your pledge. Okay, let's keep on going. Um, YouTube, if they, let's keep on going. Test Gamer says, what about donating to a secular organization? I do not recommend it. I think that if a person is going to give money, you want to involve God in your, if you don't believe in God, don't do this. Okay, that's what I'm first going to say to you. The only reason why you should pledge money and to give money is if you believe in God. If you don't believe in God, then go party. Um, but I think that that's really dangerous. So I would not donate it to, um, I don't know, uh, you, I don't know, your local gamer fund. Okay. Mayor Weiss, Beryl, nothing like your LinkedIn power videos from your morning Uber commutes to the office back in 2019. I know. I got to get back on those, Mayor. I know. I agree with you. Um, Jay Sauls, my mom is here. Hey, mom, how are you? I love you. Thank you for joining. You're the best. You're the best, mom. Woo! Um, okay. Any other questions, guys, before I start taking on people from YouTube, from uh, Instagram Live? Um, thrifting and Sip from YouTube. Is it necessary to actually verbalize the pledge? I have been giving to a church for a few years. Oh, my gosh, that's a great question. Um, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now, who asked that question? That was thrifting and sip. Okay. So how do you actually make the pledge? I'm so happy you asked that question. I can't believe I didn't address it. The pledge has to be written. Your pledge to charity has to be written down. Um, it has to be written on a document. I think I misspelled written. Just pretend it's written well. It has to be written down. Okay, you have to write to your local community organization and say, I, Tiffany, whatever your name is, am pledging to you $12,000 or $6,000 over the next 12 months. And you sign it and you put on it without promise. By, by the way, guys, that's a big thing. You want to put on your pledges, no promise. Okay, at the end of the day, God is your partner. You cannot promise. If God does not will it to be, it will not be. OK, you have to write down your pledge because the document will hold you accountable to your pledge. Thank you, friends. Thank you for asking. Great question. Um, let's go to Instagram. Wes, Cal Wes Calagifer. How can I be a good steward with my pledge? For instance, how could I realistically know how much to increase the pledge every year if income increases or does not increase? Oh, my gosh, it's such a great question. You guys are really smart. How do you know how much to pledge? Okay, I can only share with you, Mr. Gallagher, if that is your real name. Wes 
Gelafer. Um, how much money to pledge? Great question. I can only share with you how I do it. I speak to my rabbi. All right. I speak to him and I tell him and he asks me, how much are you making? How much did you make? How much are you planning on making? How much do you foresee to make? And based on that, we work together and we come up with what is a good amount in order for me to pledge. If you don't have a rabbi, speak to your accountant, speak to your local faith-based organization, speak to your spiritual mentor or speak to just your mentor in general. Okay. Figure out that um, you have to have a third party that's helping you with this because I've seen people become their own, um, their own mentor and that's not a good thing. All right. I hope that answers your question. Um, LinkedIn. Let's go to LinkedIn. YouTube. You're on fire tonight. Thank you guys. Um, LinkedIn. Benita Baracha. I am Benita from India. I am a Christian. Is it correct to give the tithe to the church or to support the ministry? I did it for decades, but did not see any financial blessings at all. In fact, my finances shrunk. There's a great Chabad house in India. Go give to it. Um, Benita, again, it might be that you're not giving, you're not giving enough. Okay, that's what it might be, Benita. Again, when you guys say that you're giving charity, $18 is not charity. Okay? I'm sorry. $180 is not charity. $1,800 is not charity. It's just not. You are obligated by, by God himself to give 10%. If you want to test God, right, that's like going, to, you know what, guys? Here's an analogy for you. That's like going to the gym and picking up a one-pound weight once or twice a week. You pick up the weight, one, weight, one pound. You go like this once a week and you walk out and you say, I really am not seeing, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the, the blessing. I'm not, I'm not seeing the difference. It is because you are not giving enough. Okay. You got to give more Benita. You have to test God. You got to go into the gym. All right. The financial gym and you have to test your capability. Test God. See if he is doing what he said he was going to do. God says this, not me. Okay? Let's go. Let's keep on going. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Amazing people. Guys, do more. Um, if you're on YouTube, if you're on LinkedIn, um, even if you're on Instagram, please hit the like button. Give me a like. Leave a comment so that the algorithm starts giving me some rhythm. All right? Hit the like. Please take just one second right now. Bang, bang, bang. Just do me a favor. I do this for fun. I do this for free. It's, it's 9.30 at night. I want to be with my family, but I'm here with you. All I ask is for a little like, okay? A little like and a little comment. You could even comment your name, comment where you're from, whatever it is. Just push me up in the algorithm and give me a little rhythm, okay? Let's keep on going, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Songbird Debbie from Instagram. Is it okay to apply for help from the government? It is, but it's better to apply for help from God. Um, Said Bells, is the hospital a good idea? I guess it's a good idea. My issue with giving to hospitals is, I'm sorry to say this, maybe it's controversial, is it's hard to say where your money is going. I like, I like when money goes from hand to mouth, okay? I can see where the money is going. Zayt, oh, Zaytelin Delicatessen. What's up, what's up Zaytelin? How are you? Uh, Beryl Solomon, do you give each month, each season? How do you plan for this? I try to give weekly, okay? That's the goal. And you want to spread out your donations because if you wait to the end of the year, it's going to be very, very painful. All right. Hope that answers your question. Um, Jorge, I love you too, buddy. Thank you. Um, what's up, Matthew from Jacksonville? Um, the real Bohemian Bazaar. What about feeding people in need? Absolutely. But you can't like just say it, guys. It's like it's so nice to say feed people in need. I'm not saying that you don't do this, but feed people in need. Guys, you actually got to buy the food. You got to go to the grocery store. You have to drop a thousand bucks and you have to go put it in people's mouths. Okay. It's not just saying feed the needy. You have to go open the pocket. Okay. Swipe the card. Um, uh, let's go to YouTube. Moshe, sorry, Insta, um, LinkedIn. Moshe Rosenberg, you should have the strength to do good to 120 years and health with all your family. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Um, Elkanon. Barrel, keep up the good work. I love you too. Um, YouTube, Vasco Dolovsky. What do you think about automatically subscribe if people forgot to make the cancel subscription? I guess that uh, Elijah is you. Um, 
uh, Test Gamer on YouTube. Beryl, where can we learn about more about charity and what God said about it? Where should one learn more? Um, just type in Judaism charity and you'll find plenty of it. And you might say to yourself, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm an atheist. I'm a Buddhist. That's okay. Nobody's perfect. I'm just joking. Calm down. Okay. But you have to understand the source of it all comes from the Old Testament. It all comes from the Bible. All of the books that it's all you want to you want to learn it from the source and judaism has the source it received it from mount sinai okay so that's what you want to get it before you want to get it from god himself you, you don't want to get it after everybody's played with the message if that makes sense okay um let's keep on going steve what's up errol how you doing uh geez mom how you doing classic flooring thank you <laughs> um joel valpini all pitch all pitch in and goes down. Okay, Emer Flores from YouTube. According to scripture, is the 10% after taxes, mortgage payments, and living expenses? It's for sure after taxes. It's not before mortgage payments and it's not before living expenses. Um, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Argyle Belmont, I love you too. <sighs> Zadok, I appreciate your advice. Thank you. John Benemy, Chabad. Which month? Okay, Sniper33 on Instagram writes, where should I start my pledge? Great question, Sniper33, um, if that is your real name. You should start it right now, right here. You should call your local faith-based organization, and you should call them and say, I would like to make a pledge to you. And you should write down that pledge. Write it down, okay? I'm going to make a pledge to you of $5,000 this year which would be $500 a month, or $6,000 a year, which would be $500 a month. Okay? And back to what we said before, you might be asking yourself, I'm barely making ends meet, Beryl. How can I do it? How can it be done? Can I get an amen? And you say to yourself, how could I do it? Remember my story, right? I pledged $300,000. I was $100,000 short. God opened up for me a new business, a new recruiting business for sales, because that's what God does. God sees that you need more money. God sees that you have more expenses. God sees that you are a, remember how we started? Remember how we started? We started that God is, God needs a banker. He's got to put his money with somebody. Person number one is a miser. He is evil. He's not evil, but he doesn't give any charity. All right. He takes money and he doesn't give any money. So God says, God has a choice. Who should I put my money with? Should I give it to the Scrooge? And God says, no, we're not going to give it to the Scrooge. Should I give it to the nice charitable man or woman? Yes, I will give it to the nice charitable man or woman. All right. If you were God, think about this. If you were God, who would you give the money to? I would not give it to the Scrooge. I would give it to the charitable nice man or woman. All right. Leroy Torres, thank you for efforts, Beryl. Thank you, buddy. Um, here we go. Uh, we're going back to Instagram. Ortel Charvit, shalom. So the only blessing in money comes from charity only. I do give 10%. Again, the only blessing. God has many ways. He told us we could test him with one thing. By the way, you're not allowed to test God. You're not allowed to say, God, if I, I don't know. If I start, uh, who knows what? If I stop swearing, okay, I demand of you a blessing. Or I'm testing you to see if I stop swearing, I need a blessing. Or if I start eating kosher, I want a blessing. Or if I start eating halal, I want a blessing. Or if I start eating, or if I start, uh, or if I, whatever it is, okay, if I don't kill somebody, I want a blessing. You shouldn't kill anybody. But you're not allowed to test God with anything. You're allowed to test him with one thing. God says, test me with one thing. You're allowed to test God with charity. You're allowed to say to him, God, if I give this amount to charity, I'm testing you to see if you're going to give it back to me. And people tell me all the time, what happens if it doesn't work? And I say to them two things. Number one, let's find out now if it works. Because imagine you're 30, 40, 50 years old or 18 years old, whatever it might be, 60 years old. And you find out that giving charity works, then you have a secret weapon for the rest of your life. I cheat in business, okay? I cheat in business by giving charity. That's how I cheat. 
Because I give charity, I have rocket fuel in my engines where most people are driving their car on regular fuel. I have rocket fuel in my car, okay? So you wanna test God to see if this thing works. That's option, that's scenario number one. Scenario number two, if it doesn't work, then let's go party. Let's go to the club, all right? Let's forget about this whole God spiel, this whole shtick, and let's go party. Because if this isn't true, then it's all not true. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? It all has to be true. Not some of it has to be true. It all has to be true. So let's figure out if it's true now. And if it's not true, then let's go party because I love to party, okay? And if it is true, well, let's find out now because that means we're gonna be rich and we all wanna be rich, okay? You win both ways, all right? But my experience has been six out of seven years, it's work like a charm. This year was the only year that I fell a little bit short, but I already see with my own eyes that God has already planted the seed for me to have an incredible year. Okay? Let's keep on going. Um, Instagram, the purpose pusher. Charity works. The tithe is owed to God. My life has never been the same since I started. By the way, you're absolutely right. Um, I actually love black people. Let me tell you why. Many reasons. But I love black people for this reason. You guys have this like simple faith. You guys have this honest, simple faith. You guys do what you got to do and you guys make it work. Okay. And I love that about you guys. And you have, you, you bring up a great point is that it's not your money. The charity, the 10% is not yours. It's not your money. It's God's. God lets you keep 90%. The 10% is not yours. Great point, the purpose pusher. Purpose. Sarah Belgium's such an inspiration. Thank you for liking and commenting all my stuff. I really appreciate it. I see you, by the way. Mind-blowing per usual. Haha, <laughs> love the party analogy. Guys, um, you should know, I recognize a lot of your names and from like your likes and your comments and stuff on regular days, and you should just know how much I love you and I appreciate you. So thank you. Um, 31 Elijah, and I know that Instagram was still live. All right, we're back. We're back. Ladies and gentlemen, we back. Instagram, I mean, LinkedIn, please put your comments. You guys have been really, really quiet tonight, okay? Please don't leave me. I love you guys. I love you guys. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, Daniel Eisenhower, thank you for being here. Barry Holiday, you're back. Um, Xavier Harris, the government is mad. Um, Okay, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. GZ Mom, Shana Tova, Happy New Year. I will give more. I'm so proud of you. Eva Miri, my real name is Eva Miriam. Thank you for being here, Eva. Um, Instagram, AV Crockett, I'm in prison. I want to open a charity. What's your recommendation? I'm not gonna, sorry, you're, you're Persian. Um, just find something. Find, it's easy to open a charity. Don't open one, just give one. There's plenty of charities out there. Nobody needs your charity. Just give more charity. Guys, at this time, at this point, I'm going to be, I'm going to be um, logging off of YouTube. 
and LinkedIn. I'm going to stay on Instagram. I'm going to take live questions and answers, okay? Um, so just LinkedIn, do me a favor. Before we go, I beg of you, I plead of you, and YouTube, leave a comment, and please hit that like button so it pushes me up in the algorithm so more people can see this message. Instagram, do not leave. Um, we're going to be going live together. I'm going to be bringing on guests so I could talk to you guys one-on-one -on -one interactive, okay? Um, Simcha Weiss from LinkedIn, thanks for talking about my sir. Uh, Mayor Weiss, no, I'm not going to um on. Guys, please put comments on LinkedIn, on YouTube. Just leave, a, leave where you're from, okay? Put, bang, let me know where you're from, okay? Alexandra Kaba, thanks. Leave me where you're from. Hi from Canada. Tell me where you're from and tell me your favorite color, okay? Um, I'm going to let that run for a minute while I go into the next room with my sweet Instagram fam, okay? I'm going to sit down, nice, comfortable place, and we're going to spend some time on Instagram. I'm going to go live with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be absolutely epic. All right. LinkedIn, YouTube, please hit that like button. Hit the comments. Do me a favor. Show me some love. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. Let's go. Guys, please request on Instagram. Please request on Instagram. And I'm going to start bringing you guys on one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Um, Mark Goldberg, thank you. Esther Chazelle, thank you. Um, Simcha Weiss, thank you. Elchanan, thank you. Daniel, thank you. Manny, thank you. Samuel, thank you. Daniel, thank you. You guys are awesome. The best. I'll see you later. All right.